This is gonna be a really hard video for me to record. So I got the Mega Size RX-78F00 Gundam, or F-100 as I like to call it, based on the first mobile suit to break the Guinness World Records for the largest mobile suit to date. I wasn't able to pick this kit up during my stay over in Japan, but I at least got the bus model and the 1-100 scale for myself while there. One of the unique elements of a Gunpla box is sometimes the box art has to be beautiful in order for it to pop. And this box doesn't lie. I mean, yeah, size-wise, it's as big as a walrus, but that's the staple for mega size and perfect grade boxes in general. And the box is too precious to even treat it like wall art. It really does have that sense of reality to, like, you actually being there watching the real thing at sunset. This box is definitely worth saving. As for the mobile suit itself, well, let's just say I'm gonna make this my only mega size for the time being. But when fully assembled, it looks great. Excluding the LED unit, this comes with a grand total of 33 runners. I found the build itself to be more enjoyable than the bus model, personally. Which I was stupid enough to build without instructions and broke a grand total of two pieces. For this one, I learned from my mistake and relied on the manual. Though the only tedious part I can list would be assembling the fingers. In my experience with Gunpla involving the perfect grade Wing Zero and Banshee Norn, as well as a handful of Rio Grades and Master Grades with some level of finger articulation, I've had some bad luck popping off the fingers from the socket, but at least they came cold molded together. Here, it's all separated by each joint. You have to assemble the fingers all together, including the plating, and surprisingly, they don't want to escape from me. Not yet, anyway. When fully assembled, it looks as beautiful as the actual thing. And the details really pop when the proper panel lining is applied. Though it would have been great if they had water slides included with this kit, maybe I'll buy some third-party ones and use those as a side project. Oh wait, I already ordered some! As it is, it stands at a total of 15 inches, and it has a better presence with the choice of matte plastic rather than the gloss used on the bust model. Maybe a little more durable than brittle on some of the runners in comparison between the two, but that's to be expected on most Gunpla kits nowadays. Even if there are some details missing, like the lights on top of the shoulders as well as closer to the collar, it's not enough for me to lose sleep over, and you could just custom paint those to your liking if you wish, or do what Maga Salabo did and actually modify the whole thing to give it an authentic experience. Though, unless you have a degree in engineering or robotics, I'd advise against it. As it is, Every detail from every angle definitely gives it that aspect of Granddaddy IRL to differentiate the iconic design from 1979. The same way that Optimus Prime's design in Bumblebee screams the character in G1, but IRL. It's classic and nostalgic with extra details, but in a good way. And with the LED unit, if you can actually get the damn thing to work, the lights in the eyes and the front camera really do pop. And I'm still bummed out that the back camera doesn't get any love to shine in a literal sense. But normally, people just display things facing forward, so... Eh. As for the articulation, it's decent for its size. Unlike the 1 1 44th or 1 100th renditions, this is more on the lines of replicating what the actual Mobu suit did with its movements while also pushing the limits in some areas. Limited in some aspects, but still passable nonetheless. Just don't do any crazy JoJo poses with something this big is my one recommendation. With the action neck piece, the head can rotate 360 degrees, move side to side, look down, and look way up high. Though for some reason, the head on my copy seems to pop off very easily. Each arm rotates 360 as well, giving the friction between the polycaps and the plastic kind of a soft ratchet feeling. The shoulders have a little bit of a butterfly joint, but nothing too crazy. Because of the cylinders on the biceps, the arms don't go out that far but the arms do have a little bit over of a 90 degree bend at the elbow. The elbows themselves also have that same ratchet-like experience that the shoulders do, and can rotate 360 as well. The hands bend at the wrist and are on a ball joint, with 360 motion as well. And each individual finger is jointed at each portion. The waist can only go 180 degrees, though I strongly advise against it, because doing that will make the plastic collide with the front crotch piece. The front and back skirts are on ball joints, but the side skirts, they're unfortunately stationary. The legs go forward 90 degrees and back a little less than 90, bend over 90 degrees at the knee, light rotation at the upper part of the thigh, slight side to side at the ankle, forward and back ankle tilt, a little bit of a rotation at the ankle, 
and finally, a toe bend. So articulation may not be perfect, but you know what? That's okay. For something this big, it still does a serviceable job for being a nice recreation of the actual thing. And now for the accessories. As mentioned previously, you do get the LED unit that I mentioned before, but you'll need two LR41 batteries to install and use paper to add friction between the batteries and the cover for the compartment. The one I used here is from the bust model as well. It also comes with an extra neck piece, but it's more detail-oriented compared to what I currently have on, though it is something I currently have on the bust model as well. And the gray piece that goes inside really makes a huge difference, as without it, it looks like the robot has no neck and is awkwardly proportioned. There's also a display base, which doesn't really contribute a whole lot outside of it being a hunk of plastic, essentially. That and it being the only serviceable thing to take from the G-Dock to a kit like this. I was gonna leave it in the bag earlier, but I decided to say fuck it and assemble the thing anyway. And now we get to the worst part of the kit. That being... That's it. While I do wish there was a little bit more to offer, I still appreciate this kit for what it is. Even scaled next to a perfect grade really gives it a different vibe and shelf presence as well. Now as for recommendations, I'd only recommend it if you've actually visited the Yokohama Gundam factory. It may have been like a hundred bucks more when I won it on Bai compared to its normal retail price of 120-ish, but it's still worth it in my opinion. Just not what eBay is offering nowadays in the aftermarket. But if you don't have the money, the shorter guys I already mentioned earlier are just as good as well. And they have more accessories on top of that if you're crazy for that kind of stuff. Though if you haven't had the chance to see the Gundam in person, please don't feel bad as it's a part of our love, our passion, even our hobby, that we got something that was impossible. Possible. No Mula Flaga reference intended. It brought smiles and joy to many people from afar, broke records, and took robotics to a whole new level. And while we're still decades away, maybe even centuries away from having what we see in the franchise, what we got is still a breathtaking experience as it is, and we shouldn't take away the possibilities of what the next stage could be, if any. While it was my favorite part of my trip last year, it breaks my heart to see it no longer operational. But it definitely left many tears of joy for all of us. We shall always remember this in our hearts online, in person, Stephen Colbert, and through our memories. Keep on smiling for the future. As for me, I'm going to take a break from editing reviews like this for a while. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Jana. Also, holy shit, Amin is real! <laughs>